one of the more inspiring things that set the first and the second album apart was the collaboration with Matthias Olsson. His Roth Handel studio is perfect for our kind of music. There never were any doubts that we would return there and expand our collaboration. <laughs> you can easily feel a bit overwhelmed when you enter Roth Handel studios, since it's like an infinite amount of instruments and gadgets to work with. And even though the studio has all these classic sounds, it's just as much the creative collaboration with Matthias that makes us return. The usual procedure when recording with Matthias is that we show up with our demos and tell him which instruments we want to record. While we are recording the parts we have asked for, Matthias is listening and getting into the context of the sounds. This is where he gets his ideas. By now we almost regard him as a fifth member because he knows our music so well and we know that his ideas always leads to new interesting sounds. When I look for new sounds or sounds that can amplify Anima Mortis music, I think a lot of times it's by association that you have one original sound and then you want to find one that either complements that sound or goes in the complete opposite direction. If they have a very moody, slow, dark piece, maybe you want to emphasize that by having really low basses, or you can go in the opposite direction of that and have something that is fairly bright that will give more like a sky or an atmosphere to that section. So it's always about working with contrast. Either you go with that first impulse or you go in the opposite direction of it to create different effects. To me, the most important thing is how the sound feels in context of the song and what kind of pictures it gives. If it's a cold, harsh, metallic sound or if it's uh, warm and acoustic. Any sort of association that will push the listener into the direction that you want. One of the more characteristic sounds in our music is the Mellotron. It is based on tape frames sampling real instruments. Some of our most frequently used tapes are the different choirs. Since we use the Mellotron choirs in almost every song, Matthias sometimes feels the need to have a little intervention. We're going to do an unfair long skiva. Och då, man kanske inte måste göra så att varje gång man kommer till ett sånt här parti så hoppar man på liksom 8 voice <laughs> Det här är ju 8 voice <laughs> Nej men så jag menar att det kan ju vara en idé det skulle, att... Alltså det här skulle lika, alltså det som skulle vara absolut bäst skulle ju vara riktigt kvar här. If you're using one sound throughout an album, you can do so much with that sound to make it more interesting. And it doesn't have to be a really big, like apparent thing, but just small details that will make it different. Just by using, for instance, a guitar amplifier or using a tape echo or double tracking it in octaves or all of these little tricks that you can do to make that one sound change throughout the album makes the whole listening experience a lot deeper and far more interesting. And also that you never copy and paste it, that it's always played, that it's always a performance makes it so much more alive than if you do like the loopy copy and paste stuff. And if you want to push that further, maybe not using the most apparent sound. So if you have a synth lead 
moving that over maybe to a piano, for instance. It's here, it's here, ice. It's here, ice. Alright, so now we're going to try to record with one of the rarest keyboards in the world, and there's like 50 made. But the funny thing is that we're going to be using one of the rarest discs for the uh, orchestron. And that's with this logo type. Because these are the ones that they were supposed to be using, but the prototypes and the handwritten ones are far more common than the actual production ones. So we'll, we'll try this one out. Det känner alltid att det är en tysk ubåtsvib alltid med orkestrån. Det känns alltid en 30-tals. Och det kommer liksom inte riktigt fram och så är det liksom så jävla huttrigt liksom. One of the things that I enjoy the most when recording is doing treatments, which is when you have a recorded section of an instrument and then you treat that through maybe the modular system behind me here or through effect pedals. And especially when you start using really cheap and, and dirty and beat up guitar pedals, uh, they will kind of like push the recording in a new and interesting direction. And when you start to combine pedals, so you have distortion pedals and, and echo units and maybe through a filter, there's really no limit to where you can take the sound. A lot of times you can maybe even go on this long journey and then you come back and realize that it was actually best with the original sound, which is wonderful. There's one hazard working in this environment with these instruments, and that is that a lot of them have a lot of history and a lot of weight. Sometimes you get into a kind of nostalgic overload with using a sound when it sounds exactly like your heroes. I spend all my days here, so of course there's a certain tingle with certain sounds, but replicating something that was done maybe 20 or 30 or 40 years ago with the same sound doesn't really make any sense because it's far more interesting to find a new way of using these old instruments. I like destroying them, taking them apart, just messing with them to try to find another way of using them.
scoring old synthesizers can certainly be exciting since they often have unique characters. So when you stumble across that perfect sound, it usually brings a smile to your face. Shit! I'm just going to try them <laughs> it probably takes a bit longer to record these old instruments, constantly having to tune them, tweaking the sounds, setting up the mics. Uneven keys makes them harder to play and they might even be broken, so you have to change the arrangement. So we would most likely be done faster with modern copies of the instruments. But we believe this extra bit of effort will give the sounds more personality. When the recording started, Frederick came with his computer and these massive lists of overdubs that he wanted to do. I think they decided that they wanted to spend more time here and, and to explore stuff. But there was still this stress time-wise of getting stuff done. The funny thing is that I think we've got everything on the list done and far more. And a lot of stuff that Fredrik didn't even know that he wanted showed up during the recordings. exciting because I think that there's a lot of different ways that this album could turn out so it's going to be really interesting to hear the final two channels the stereo mix of this album because there's so much interesting stuff recorded so it can be just about anything Having worked with the material for such a long time, it felt like a creative boost to have Matthias come in and view the material with fresh ears. There is always this creative liveliness when we work together, and that has been one of my favorite parts of this recording. Mm -hmm. 